When I'm out looking for a fishing spot or just out fish watching, I can't help noticing my surroundings, the water, the plants, the wildlife, but especially the birds. If you are into the bird and fish experience, the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. has revamped its birdhouse exhibit. The newly renovated birdhouse focuses on native birds of the Americas and has indoor bird ponds, complete with U.S. native fish. In this video, I'll do a quick rundown of the zoo's cool new bird exhibit and tell you how to plan your visit there. Then, because this is an aquarium channel, I'll focus on the fish. I'll tell you about the two native species featured there, the mummy chog and the pumpkin seed sunfish, and what it takes to keep and appreciate them in a home aquarium. I'm Bob, and this is Sunny's Fish Room. The theme of the birdhouse exhibit at the Smithsonian's National Zoo is bird migration, from the Arctic tundra to South America. It showcases three walk-through aviaries. The first recreates Delaware Bay, a major pit stop and refueling station for migratory birds. The aviary houses shorebirds and ducks, the saltwater pond contains Atlantic horseshoe crabs, Limulus polyphemus, a cornerstone species whose eggs feed thousands of migratory birds each year. The species is found from Maine to Florida. They lay their eggs on the beach in the spring through early summer. They're called crabs, but they're actually arachnids like spiders and scorpions. But their numbers are declining because of habitat loss due to beach development and overharvesting. Their bright blue blood has clotting properties that make it ideal for testing vaccines. The pond also houses mummichog, a tough, adaptable native killifish that thrives in fresh or salt water, withstands extremes of heat or cold, and has numerous populations adapted to the pollution that often contaminates its home waters. The second pond provides a habitat for pumpkin seed sunfish, a medium-sized freshwater species that digs nests in the substrate and guards its eggs. Next is the waterfowl aviary, a recreation of the prairie pothole region of the upper Midwestern United States. In this region, snowmelt and seasonal rains fill temporary ponds. These create habitat for nesting birds, especially ducks, which conceal their nests in the thick grasslands. The last room mimics a traditional rural South American coffee farm. Taller trees provide a canopy above the coffee plants. Unlike a coffee tree only monoculture, the mixed plantings provide a refuge for birds migrating from the north to escape the colder months. Outside the birdhouse are a series of enclosures featuring such species as the Cory Bustard, the Barred Owl, and the Domestic Turkey. And now, Back to the fish. The mummichog, Fungulus heteroclitus, is found along the Atlantic coast from the Gulf of St. Lawrence to northeast Florida. They live in saltwater marshes, tidal creeks, and adjacent freshwaters. They're large for a killifish. They can reach five inches, but most of them are smaller. I'd allow two gallons per fish. They are not fussy eaters and will readily take flakes and pellets. You can collect mummichog with dip nets or minnow traps. They are also sold in bait stores. If you buy mummichog that have been kept in a bait tank, you definitely need to quarantine them and medicate them to prevent outbreaks of disease and parasites. If they've been kept in a freshwater bait tank, you can kill off most of what they may have been exposed to by keeping them in full strength seawater for a week or two. I don't have any now, but I've kept them in tap water with about a teaspoon of marine salt per gallon. They'll adapt well to freshwater provided the water has at least moderate carbonate hardness. If your water doesn't have carbonate hardness, you can add some crushed coral to the filter. My ballpark guesstimate is one quarter cup per every 10 gallons. Mummichog don't need a heater and will do fine at room temperature. The mid 60s to mid 70s F, about 18 to 25 C. As with many temperate fish species, they begin spawning in the spring when days start getting longer. Like blooms of spring flowers, many spawning native fish will develop bright colors in the spring. Male mummichog will develop a green color with yellow sequins and yellow or orange ventral fins. They'll breed through the early fall. To get them to spawn, you'll probably need to increase their photo period to 12 hours or more of daylight. 
I'm guessing that bumping up the temperature to the high 70s or low 80s F will also help. That's 25 to 27 C. They'll spawn in mops, and if you want to breed them, you'll need to collect the eggs and incubate them away from the parents. You can start the fry on vinegar eels and shift them over to fine powdered food within a few days. The pumpkin seed sunfish, Lipomus gibbosus, is native to the Atlantic coast drainages from New Brunswick to Georgia, as well as the Great Lakes and Hudson Bay and the upper Mississippi drainages. They've also been introduced to Europe. They prefer lakes and ponds and quiet pools in rivers and streams. When I visited the birdhouse, the pumpkin seeds were still small, only a few inches. But they can get as large as 16 inches. That's 40 centimeters. Keeping them is like keeping oscars and other big cichlids. You can accustom them to cichlid pellets, but you need to soak the pellets first. They don't have the jaw teeth that cichlids have to grind them up. They need a big tank a hundred gallons or more. Like other members of the Lipomus genus, they spawn in the spring. Lipomus males develop really bright colors. In response to longer days and higher temperatures, males dig nests in the substrate so they may wreck your nice planted tank. For a home aquarium spawning, I'd guesstimate they need temperatures in the 70s to low 80s F, that's 25 to 27 C, and 12 or more hours of light. The males also get territorial and aggressive. Under close quarters, they'll harass and eventually kill females and subdominant males. They'll chase the female away after spawning. Be sure to include lots of rocks, driftwood, and other cover. This will give the females and less aggressive males places to hide if they need to. A better choice might be to opt for a smaller Lipomus species, like these long ear sunfish, Lipomus megalotus. The fry are tiny and need live brine shrimp right after they absorb their yolk sacs. The male guards the fry until after they hatch. After they hatch, it's a good idea to remove the male to keep him from eating the fry. U.S. viewers, before keeping mummichog pumpkin seeds or any other native species, be sure to check with your state fish and wildlife agency to make sure it's legal to keep them in your area. You'll need to check the zoo's website for their hours of operation to find out when you can visit. You'll need an entry pass, which you can reserve on the zoo's website at https colon slash slash nationalzoo.si.edu. If you're planning to drive, you'll also need to reserve a parking pass, which is $30 U.S. At the time of this recording, spring 2023, You'll also need an entry pass for the birdhouse. This is temporary to give the birds a chance to get accustomed to visitors. If you like this video, here's another one the YouTube algorithm thinks you might also like. For more videos on fish or fish keeping, and occasional nature videos like this one, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.